Hello everybody and welcome back to another My Porch Prints tutorials. Today we are going to be working on this My First Pirate Journal and I've already gone ahead and printed everything out. Everything is printed on cardstock except for the pages which are printed on paper and I am going to cut these out and we can come right back. So here we are, we're going to start with this cover piece. So we're going to go and um, fold all of these little tabs inward. So I'm using a scoreboard here to just score that and make it a little bit easier, scoring either side of the spine. And then I'm going to be folding each of these edges in like so. And using Fabri-Tac, I'm going to glue those down. So Fabri-Tac is just a non-water-based glue so it doesn't wrinkle your paper and it's really convenient for this process. So these edges are just to make the book a little sturdier and hide the edges so they're not white. All right, and then just folding along those creases and you should have a cover that looks something like this. All right, and now we can jump into our pages. Quick note here, I did take this page in particular and I printed it out um, on cardstock and I cut this little uh, eye patch out to make like a eye patch like add on for fun. Like if you're giving this to like a kid or something, this might be a cool gift for them. So just something to mention real fast. Uh, working with our pages here, we are going to be folding them in half like so, and then folding them in half again, just like this. And then opening that back up, we are going to be gluing it together so that the pages don't come apart. So again, taking my Fabri-Tac and just adding glue all over the inside of this page. And then we can fold it in half like so. And now you should have uh, two pages just like this. And we are going to be making four signatures of four pages each. So I've gone ahead and laid those out, making sure everything is right side up. And now to put these uh, signatures into our book, we're going to take the hidden spine template that comes with this kit. And I'm going to be using an all that comes with a uh, book binding kit that we have. We will have that linked down below. There's a link to like all the supplies we use, so you can find that there. And I'm just going to go ahead and poke out all of these holes that are marked on the template already, just like so. And then it also has these lines here and we're going to want to fold along that dotted line for this piece. And to make our signature, we're just going to stack four pages together like this, just kind of nestling them in one on top of the other. Just like so, making sure everything's kind of nice and even here. And then taking our template piece, we are just going to place that right inside the crease of our signature just like this. And I'm going to use bulldog clips to hold this in place. This is optional, but it helps a lot to clip this little template piece in here so that it doesn't move. And then I am going to poke those holes out using the template right through our signature like this. And then we are going to remove the template piece. That's real important. You don't want to accidentally sew that into the book. So remember to remove it, leaving the clips in place to hold all those pages still. And now we can start sewing. So I'm going to take some waxed thread. Again, this came with the book binding kit and I use about three times the length of the book. Um, and that gives me enough thread to work with here. And we're going to be doing a pamphlet stitch. So you want a smaller tail and a longer tail on your thread when you thread it through the needle. And we're going to start with the back of the book so that we can hide the knot. So we're going to start with this first row of um, holes here for our signature and going through the center of the template, just like so the center hole right here in this first set of signature holes. And then we're going to go through the center of our signature, the hole that we made there, just like this. And then pulling that through, you want to leave the longer tail sticking out just a little bit from the back of our our template like this because if you pull that through you won't have anything to tie the um, pamphlet stitch off with and you'll have to start over so make sure you don't pull that through as you're sewing all right so now we can go ahead and go through this top hole here and again finding our top hole of that first set of signatures right there and sewing through just like this. 
And now we're going to go through this bottom hole at the bottom, like this. Right, so just pull that taut. And then finally, we are going to be going back through this center hole in the middle, just like this. And then we can go ahead and pull that through and remove our needle. And now you should have two tails that are on either side of this center stitch. And it's really important to have this center stitch in the center on top of these two tails like this, because it'll keep the knot from pulling through and having our signature fall out. So it's real important to remember that. So once you have that, we can tie our knot. Um, I like to tie a couple of times just to make sure that it doesn't come out. So two or three times seems to do the trick just like this. And then I'm going to take some scissors and remove some of that excess string. We don't need too much. All right. And now we can pull the clips off like this and our pages should be secured. This first signature should be sewn into our hidden template just like this. And your pages should be able to flip freely without falling out. All right. And so for the next step, we just want to repeat this process with the next three signatures. So stacking them up, creating our holes using the template and then sewing them into the hidden spine, just like we did before. Same stitch, same process. All right, and once you're done with all of those signatures, it should look something like this. And this hidden spine template is going to allow us to hide those knots when we glue it into our cover. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So just lining up, you should have already folded the tabs on either side of your hidden spine template. If you haven't already, uh, do that now. And it's just going to line up exactly with the spine of our book. So we're going to add some glue to those little tabs on the hidden spine and then just lining up the spine with our hidden spine template and then smoothing down these little wings here, these little flaps that hold it into the cover and then letting that dry for a little bit. And it should look something like this. All right, so now we can cover up the inside pages. So taking these two panels here, we're gonna be adding that to the front and back cover and you can just glue them in as is. I went ahead and took a corner rounding punch and rounded off the corners just to make it look a little more finished here. And then adding some glue, making sure to get all of those edges so they don't pop up and gluing that down to the inside of the front cover like this. Just hiding any white that was showing. And we're going to do the same thing to the back cover. All right. And now that is the basic uh, sort of base for our book all finished. So now we can go ahead and start with decorating. So I'm going to begin with this cover piece here using a little bit of puff tape. Again, this is optional. I'm going to be gluing the skull down onto the front of the skull of the cover, and that is going to give it just like a slight 3D effect, just a little fun pop-up effect, make the book a little more interesting. You can kind of see what that looks like here. And if you want to pop up more, you can add more puff tape. That's entirely up to you. I just used one single piece. And now I'm going to begin by decorating with the pockets. So I'm going to be taking this first decorative corner pocket here and adding glue to the sides and the bottom, staying as close to the edges as possible to make sure we have plenty of room. I'm going to just glue it into the front cover like this. And then for these blank pages, I'm going to be adding the pockets that come with the kit. These ones here, there are only five of them, but if you print out this sheet multiple times, you can have more pockets. I'm just going to go ahead and use the five that I have to save time. So same process. I used a, um, I believe it was a one and a half inch punch to punch out these sort of like divots in the pocket, but you can cut them out with scissors. That's fine. And then adding glue to the sides and the bottom, again, staying close to the edges and just gluing those in here. And just adding those sort of sporadically throughout the journal, wherever I thought they would look nice. 
And next we have this folio piece that comes with the kit. So I went ahead and already folded all of the tabs in and we're gonna be putting this in the back of the journal. Again, you can put this anywhere you want. This is just what I'm doing. And to secure it closed, it does come with these little paper buttons and I've already gone ahead and punched those out and they are marked in the center with a small dot, kind of hard to see, but using a micro hole punch, I'm just going to punch that little piece out. You could use a needle or an awl or something like that. So just making a little hole and we're going to be using brads to secure these down. So. Um, if you don't have brads, you could use puff tape instead, so you might want to do that before punching out the holes if you're not going to be using a brad, just something to make note of. But basically, we're just going to mark inside those holes on our folio, just kind of lining them up sort of in the center. I just eyeballed where mine looked good. And then, again, taking a micro hole punch and just punching those holes out. And then I'm going to be using brads to secure these down and that will just give a little bit of dimension to them so that we can wrap a string around them to seal it shut, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you don't have brads and you'd like to get some, these are also listed in our supply link down in the description box. So if you want some of these, you can check that out and find those there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and poke the brad through our button and then through this little folio here those holes we made just like that and then flattening these little like tabs on the brad and doing that to both buttons and it should look something like this all right and I'm going to just go ahead and glue that into the back cover like so you could use like velcro tape or something if you want to be able to pull it out that's perfectly fine um, and then I'm going to be adding some of the ephemera that comes with this kit as well as that um, eye patch that I mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to go ahead and poke a couple of holes in it to be able to tie some string through it. And this is just makes kind of like a little fun present if you're giving this to a kid or if the kid wants to decorate. It'll be kind of a, a cute little add in. And for this folio pocket, again, you don't have to add these things. You could put like maybe some of those like chocolate gold coins or something. This is just kind of for demonstration purposes. And then using some string, I'm just going to wrap it around those two buttons just like this. And this is going to hold the folio closed. All right, so now that that is done, we can go ahead and start with the decorating portion. So I've gone ahead again and printed uh, all of these ephemera pieces on cardstock and cut them all out. And for decorating here, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with this little map. So uh, I printed these out on cardstock originally and then decided to change my mind and printed them on paper. And I printed them front and back with one of the papers that come with the kit so that they're a little more decorative. And I'm going to be wrinkling mine up just by crushing it in my hands here, making it look a little bit more distressed and then rolling it up like this and I'm going to be adding a wax seal sticker which I will have a link for these down below in the description box if you are interested they don't come with the kit but um, they're kind of a fun little addition to this little project here so just making this uh, little rolled up map and then to add it to our book, I just took a scrap piece of paper out of my trash bin and I'm just going to be using it like a belly band here to hold that in place. Just like that. And it does add a lot of thickness to your book. So if you don't want to do this, that's fine. I just wanted to show you something that I did for fun. And now for the basic portion, I'm just going to be um, adding a bunch of different ephemera pieces to the pockets that we made earlier. So just sort of filling up the journal here. And I'm just going to like kind of decorate the journal and let you follow along if you want to see this. If you don't, you could feel free to skip to the end if you don't want to see how I decorated. But if you're looking for some ideas, um, I'm just going to kind of go through here and quickly show how I decorated. And just a couple of other things to mention. I did use some uh, puff tape throughout this. So if you want to use that, you can just give things like a 3D effect. That's again, optional. Um, any little additives you want to use from your own craft supplies are perfectly fine. You don't have to do things exactly how I did. 
And if you are having, um, like giving this to a child to decorate, um, if they're younger, it, you might want to consider printing out this ephemera on sticker paper. And that will just make it a little bit easier for them to decorate. They don't have to fiddle with glue and stuff like that. They can just kind of peel and stick and it just makes it a little bit quicker. And again, you don't have to use these pieces exactly as they come. Like I took this one and sort of cut it out with like a little arch shape to make a pocket. So I'm just gonna add some glue to the side and the bottom of this, just like this. And I'm gonna make it into like a little tuck spot for ephemera pieces. So, you know, you can get as creative as you want with this. Or you can keep it really simple, entirely up to you. Like I did something similar here. I talked, I, I, I printed this uh, piece out on cardstock originally and then changed my mind and printed it on paper so I had this like scrap piece so I decided to go ahead and use it for a little bit of decorating so like I'm just tearing a little corner here and making it again into one of those little tuck spot corners and you can just add little pieces of ephemera into it make a little collage page something like that just you know having fun with it You can use scraps for decorating. Like I went ahead and did that here. So if you didn't want to print this piece on paper and roll it up like I did earlier, you could just sort of tear it up and add some distress ink and glue it in to be decorative. That's perfectly fine. And if you were wishing that you had some more hardware pieces for this, we do have a tutorial on how to make these hardware stickers with a Cricut. So if you are interested in that, I will have that linked down below as well. All right, so that is going to finish up our journal. Now I'm going to just go ahead and do a quick flip through here uh, for anybody who just wanted to kind of see what the journal looks like when it's totally put together and finished and give you kind of an idea of what that might look like. All right, so that concludes our flip through. Quick note here, we do have a uh, another journal for this, my first mermaid journal. So if you are interested in that, I will have that linked down below as well. And we also have a tutorial out for that. So make sure you check that out. Otherwise, uh, that finishes today's video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.